you're almost certainly already ingesting log data into Dynatrace and open telemetry span data into Dynatrace. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can correlate both of those items together to see both of them in a single view within Dynatrace. So this is what the end result will look like. We have a span here called span one, and in the logs tab in the span details, we can see a log line that has been correlated to that. So how does that work? We'll see that in this video. The first, the architecture. If you haven't seen my other two videos, the first one where I generate a trace and pass it through an open telemetry collector to Dynatrace, and then the second where I do the same thing with a log, this video is kind of the culmination. So here we're going to do both. So we have trace pusher and log pusher being our sources of data. Both of those tools push their information to the open telemetry collector, and then the open telemetry collector is configured to forward that data onto Dynatrace for storage and analysis. So if you haven't seen the other two videos, just as a refresher, this is what my open telemetry collector configuration file looks like. We've got uh, a, a, an OTLP receiver, that, that receives the data on an HTTP port. And then we've got uh, an exporter that will send the data to Dynatrace. So the important thing here is that my Dynatrace API token has two permissions, ingest open telemetry traces and ingest logs. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is know my trace and span IDs because I need a record of them to then attach them to the log line. So I'm going to generate my own trace and span IDs the open telemetry specification says that a trace ID must be 32 hexadecimal characters long, and a span ID is exactly half of that at 16 characters long. So now I can use trace pusher to manually generate that span and send it to the collector. Notice that I'm manually setting the trace ID and the span ID. If I don't, trace pusher generates them for me, but I need them so that the log line can, can have access to them as well, as you'll see in a moment. So a response 200 means it got to the collector. Let's see if it made its way to Dynatrace. So waiting a few seconds, refreshing the distributed tracer screen, I can indeed see that my span made its way successfully to Dynatrace. So now it's time to push the log line. Again, I'm going to use the tool called Log Pusher this time. I'm going to again send it to the open telemetry collector I've got running on my machine. I'm going to give it some content. And again, I'm going to set the trace ID and the span ID, and I get a 200, which means it got to the collector. Let's see if the log line made its way to Dynatrace. And the log line did, in fact, make its way to Dynatrace. And you can even see here by switching into advanced mode and, and using DQL, you can see that the trace ID and the span ID is set. So now let's see if Dynatrace was able to correlate those two things together because they have the same trace and span ID. So if I click on the log line, I now see this view trace button. By clicking the view trace button, I drill down straight into the distributed trace that correlates to this log line. Of course, if you happen to find the, the span or the trace first, you can go the other way around. So by clicking on the span and then toggling over to the logs tab, I see my log and I can view logs for this trace. So this is particularly powerful for developers because developers are usually more comfortable with logs, but now they can have the best of both worlds. They can ingest their log files, use their logs, but also see the power of distributed traces. So there you go. That's how to push a span and a log line and have them automatically correlated in Dynatrace. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.